Welcome. It's going to be a great day. Today we're going to talk about Art Rage for Day and its new features. And this is really Art Rage 7 with a fancy name. And next we're going to talk about the tiled canvas, which allows seamless painting across canvas edges. First, I'm going to create a pattern that we can use. I will go to Tools and down to Grids. I'm using the grid so I can make sure everything matches up when we create the tiled canvas. I will use the selection tool to create a rectangular shape in all four corners. I am holding down the shift key so I can make multiple selections at one time and they won't disappear before I am ready. And now I'm going to fill those shapes with a color. Then I'm going to draw some lines to make the design a bit more interesting than just green squares. And now I'll draw a straight line across the top using the pen tool and I'm holding down the control key. A straight line across the bottom, a straight line on the right side, and finally a straight line down the left side. I'm going to go up to tools and get rid of the grid. Now let's change the zoom level so we can see the full tiles once they are created. Go to view and down to camera settings and go to advance and first select tile left and right and we see we get two more canvases. Then tile top and bottom and finally both directions together. You can make other adjustments in the canvas settings here. This is useful for creating infinitely scrolling backgrounds for games, animations, and presentations, as well as for creating seamless textures for your art. Now we'll look at the improved gap tolerance on the fill tool, which is faster and more reliable. I've created a drawing where I have purposely left larger gaps than I would normally leave to test this tool out. and I start off with a small gap percentage. There's some overflow, that's not good. At 10, gap percentage. I'm going to boost it to 20%. And I see that's working well, so we'll keep it at 20 until we see a gap that doesn't work. Let's see how this works as I go to my color samples and fill in her kimono. Looks like it's doing pretty good so far. This really is quite impressive so far because I have left some very huge gaps that normally would overflow. But it seems that 20% is doing the job. I'm filling in the obiage, or obiage, don't know how to pronounce it, where I left a huge gap. I would never be that sloppy with such used gaps on her bangs. It's working very well. So far it's doing a great job. Continuing to fill in the hair. So this is definitely much better. I haven't had to raise it about 20% and you can see where there are huge gaps. And the little spaces on the forehead. That's fantastic. I mean the best way to test this is to use an old drawing where there were some problems who saves those uncorrected drawings? Or another way would be to match it against Art Race 6 and go head to head. That would be the only way to see exactly how fast and more reliable it is. However, I'm convinced with just simple tests. Um, don't need to do all of that. Now let's look at the improved recordable actions. Go to File, Record Script. If you include a drawing from before the recording starts, it creates a larger file size. So only record while you're drawing. So let's draw an alien puppy. <laughs> the correct pronunciation for this Art Rage 7 version is Vitae. The emphasis is on the first syllable and it means of life. 
So I guess this is the art rage of your life. The difference between Art Rage 6 and Vitae is that there are now larger canvases to use with larger brushes, better and faster brush performance, which is really cool. And we're going to see that later in this video. So hold on. And there's also faster loading and a new app store availability, which makes it easier to update. And there's a seamless texture ability with tile canvases cooperative painting and other under the hood upgrades. Okay, now to join is finish, hit the stop button, save script panel opens, give it a name. I really should have come up with a better name for my puppy than pet demo. And now the script is saved. Now I open a new canvas. Go to File, Play Script. Choose the script I want. Play Script Panel Opens. I'm not going to change anything here and click OK. I'll speed this up so you don't have to suffer through this again. Now I'll go to the Tools, Actions, Actions Panel. Here's where I can save my recorded actions as a shortcut. And also some shortcuts to some example scripts are here, such as draw a circle, drag to activate and to the size you want. You can flip the drawing horizontally and you can flip the drawing vertically. You can set the script values. This one seems to deal with strokes. I'll leave everything on default. It breaks up my solid pen tool line into dabs of ink. Now let's go to Tools, Actions, Action Folder, which has appeared on my secondary monitor. So let's drag it over to join our party. Here's where the recorded scripts live. Not a bad neighborhood at all. Now let's talk about tool size. Here it is at 10%. Let's go to 100%. Now 200%. Now 400%, which I believe was the limit in Art Rage 6. Now let's jump to the new maximum, 800%. Okay, let's open a new painting at 2000 pixels square at 72 DPI. Let's go backwards from bottom to top using the same percentages for our strokes. Let's resize the painting and make it 300 DPI and increase the size to 12,000 pixels square. Let's fit the canvas in the window and draw new strokes side by side at the same percentages. Previous versions of ArtRage would struggle with this. The strokes will be slower and sometimes it would crash. This is a big improvement. 
As you can see, there's no lag at all with a larger canvas and higher resolution. There's also a new maximum canvas up to 32,500 pixels, which is very helpful. Finally, let's look at the improved color pickers. Let's open up the panels related to color. Go down to Tools, Color Options, Color Picker. Let's move that panel to the left over here because we have a lot more panels to open. Tools, Color Options, Custom Color Picker. Here you can see some colors I imported from a photo. And these are some default complementary colors. Now tools again, color options, paint mix profile panel. I want to pause here before we open that. Notice that real color blending is checked. Always make sure that is checked before blending colors. Now this has some presets for acrylic, brights, and heavy oils. This is to compensate for the fact that we're looking at a monitor based on light. In light, the primary colors are red, green, and blue. With pigment, the primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. Previous versions of ArtRage have tried to compensate for this with magic. Now with the paint mix profile, they are adding some more arcane shenanigans to more closely align with real world paint mixing. Now before we move to the next panel, notice this circle in the color picker. This is telling you what color is selected. Let's turn on complementary colors in all the color pickers to display complements for your current color. Now go to the upper right icon and go down to show complementary hues and choose complementary. We see another circle added which shows the complementary color to green. Next, let's choose triadic and we see a third circle added. We'll end with tetradic. However, there are also analogous and split colors to see. Now we see four circles. Here you can add the hexadecimal colors if you know the numbers. Now let's take a closer look at the paint mix profile. We see that real blending is checked. The first color and the second color mix into what the third color would look like in the natural world. That's what the paint mix profile is for, to approximate real world blending. So I'm using red, then I'm using green, mixing those together. And I want it to be a little bit darker so I'll mix a little bit more red. I'll continue mixing it to the color I'm satisfied with by adding more red and green. And then once I'm satisfied with that result, now I have a color that I've mixed together ready to use. Now you see that there is a preset for heavy oils and we will click here. Now this shows how oil paint will mix. Watch over here and you'll see why we change to acrylic preset which is brighter than oils. The brights preset is even brighter. The first feature we're going to talk about is collaborative painting. In order to use that we have to go to Art Rage Preferences then down to Enable Paint Link which I already have checked because I've already joined Paint Link and then click OK. After that, you will find a new icon in the top bar, and then you have to connect to PaintLink, put in your account name and password, then in account settings, put in your picture and any other information you want to share. And next, you have to invite some friends. I'm going to stop here concerning that because I'm going to invite a friend and we're going to do a collaborative painting together. And that will be in a future video, so you can look forward to that. And we'll talk more about PaintLink at that time.
Well, that's all for today. If you've learned something today, this has value to you, please like, share, and comment. I'd like to hear from you. And subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And remember, just create.